G'day. I don't normally buy a lot of new hardware, but recently I bought this. This is the Book 8088 version 2. This is a small notebook-like device with exceptionally old hardware in it that you can buy from AliExpress or eBay, depending on where you live. This version has some extra ports over the version 1, so this one has a serial port and a parallel port, which will come in handy later. Today we're going to talk about it, have a look at its specs, see some software running, and talk about why the heck would you even want to buy something like this. Because when you look at it, a machine like this, this Acer netbook, can do everything this can do, only better, and then more. Let's take a closer look at it. So let's begin with the specs of this machine. At its core, it's got an NEC V20 that runs at either 4.77 MHz or 8 MHz if you turn on the turbo mode. It has 640K of conventional static RAM, compact flash and USB for storage, an OPL sound card that's ad-lib compatible, and a Sirius Logic Super VGA card. So whilst this is a PC, it doesn't really compare very well to the oldest machines. The obvious things such as the VGA card, compact flash and USB aren't the only differences here. For instance, on this machine the memory is static RAM. So unlike the original machines, this one doesn't need a RAM refresh cycle. This and the NEC V20 make this machine faster than your standard PC. Although still within the same ballpark of performance, in general it's slow enough to run most software designed for the original PC, but it's also fast enough that it's incompatible with anything that requires precise timing or an original CGA card. That being said, having a VGA card opens up a whole new world of software that can run on this machine, as long as it's fast enough. The storage options make it challenging to get files onto this machine, as when you initially get it, the USB port is not working well enough. This is because the driver that comes loaded onto it does not work. However, you can download a newer driver made by Freddy V that does work with this chip. You'll likely need a compact flash card reader in order to do this, which also turns out to be a good way of putting data onto this machine. If you load something like Laplink onto it, you can also use the parallel port or serial port to transfer data, but that is obviously a little bit slower. When I first got my unit, I did have some simple hardware issues that I needed to repair. For instance, the COM port wasn't working on my machine. I had to take it apart and inspect the daughter board, and I found that there was a crystal shorting out one of the chips. Fortunately, this was fairly simple to fix. I have noticed that on the main board that a lot of the through hole parts aren't soldered as well as they probably should be, so I have added solder to all of the sockets on my system. I have also had some issues with the compact flash card, but I'm unsure whether that's the compact flash or another issue. Other aspects such as the sound and display have worked quite well for me. The display is not as dim as the version 1 appeared to be in other reviews, and has been perfectly fine for me. I've also found the sound to sound quite okay, although it's a little bit tinny with those very tiny speakers. The last thing I'd like to mention is the BIOS that comes with this machine. It is very clearly a hacked version of Sergei Kisilev's BIOS coming from GitHub. Given that it's open source, it's pretty bad that they didn't include his name in the copyright message. There are some BIOS binaries available online if you happen to have a ROM burner and are able to update your machine. I just so happen to have the correct programmer and some ROM chips, so I have been able to install a newer version of the BIOS. Having heard the hardware specs, I'm sure you're thinking, why would anyone want to have a machine like this? Surely there are better machines out there to use for playing DOS games. And for the most part, you'd be right. If you happen to own some vintage hardware such as a 386 or better, 
or even an old IBM PC, you'll likely find those more satisfactory to use than this. However, the truth is, not everyone can own vintage hardware. Some people won't have the space for it. Others will find it simply too expensive to acquire. Or maybe there just isn't any available in your local area. In this case, you need an alternative. You can, of course, use modern hardware with an emulator, which is generally actually a pretty good way of playing an old DOS game. But emulation often doesn't feel the same as running it on real hardware, and there can be some accuracy issues with some software and some hardware setups. So the last option is replica hardware such as this device, but also others such as the NUXT. An advantage of a replica like this is that you get real hardware with many of the features of old vintage systems, but also features of more modern ones, such as a compact flash card or a USB port. Of course, this changes the character and feel of such a system, so it doesn't feel entirely genuine when you use one. So there are trade-offs. Also, I've found when trying to buy one of these enthusiast projects, they often run out of stock before I get a chance to buy one. So they're often less available than vintage hardware. I ended up buying this unit as sort of a compromise between a number of these factors. Let's now take a look at the Book 8088 running some software. First up, I loaded a number of modern DOS games. The first one being Magiduck. This one uses a hacked text mode to display 16 colors even on a CGA card. It does, however, still work quite well on a VGA system such as this one. Of course, I also tested my own game, Bob's Fury, which works quite well on this machine. Hopefully, it will be a good test bed for any development that I do to hopefully ensure that it will continue to work on old machines. Paku Paku is another good example of a hacked text mode game. This one works quite well on this machine, as well as any other machine I've tested it on. Ossuary works quite well, with its CGA graphics looking exceptionally good. I have found some games that use CGA graphics don't work well on this machine, and that's because it has a VGA card. For instance, Round 42 and Freddy's Rescue Roundup do not display correctly on this machine. Next I tried Planet X3. This game works quite well on this machine in all the different graphics modes. Also, the onboard OPL sound makes a good showing here. David Murray's other game, Attack of the Petsky Robots, also works quite well, although I did encounter a strange bug. When I finish the level, the game just seems to stop. The system doesn't hang, the music keeps playing, the keyboard keeps responding, but nothing happens. I suppose this could be an error in the BIOS, but it could be a problem with the game as well. This version of Digger plays quite well. It is not the original CGA PC booter game, however. This is the remake, Digger Remastered, that was made for DOS systems quite some time ago. The CGA version of Commander Keen plays reasonably well, but a little bit slower than you'd find on other machines.
The EGA version also works, but is noticeably more janky and slower. It's playable, but I'd much prefer the CGA version over this. Here we have Lemmings running in VGA. I think this would probably work better with the CGA graphics though. Either way, it's quite playable, and it's an opportunity to use the serial port for a serial mouse. Where in time is Carmen San Diego, also benefits from having a serial mouse. This game plays quite well. SimCity doesn't fare quite as well. It's a bit slow on this machine, quite noticeably so, and the keyboard controls don't work in SimCity at all. Fortunately, the mouse controls do rescue you here. Catacomb plays quite well. The graphics and sound look good, and the character controls quite well. The SCI version of King's Quest 4 works quite well, although I did notice some things didn't animate that would normally on a faster machine. This doesn't detract from the game too much and it's still quite enjoyable. This game also benefits greatly from mouse control. Manhunter 2 does not benefit from mouse control because it doesn't support it, but otherwise works reasonably well. I think the best hardware to play this game on is actually a Tandy machine, because you get better 4 voice sound there. However, this is as good as it gets for anything that's not a Tandy. I am pretty bad at playing the second Dexter game. It does work on this machine, but it does suffer from slowdown where the screen gets a bit busy. And the last game that I tested is Overkill. It runs, but it is significantly slower than it's meant to be. Which kind of works in my favour because I'm not really great at all that many shoot 'em ups. You may notice that most of the games that I have tested are actually designed for better machines, you know, something like a 286 or better. And that's partly because this computer sits in sort of a very awkward place. Having a VGA card instead of a CGA means a lot of older games for XTs won't work because they require a real CGA. But having a slow processor also means that newer games that support VGA don't work on this machine as well. So you are very limited in what you can play. I also think that the keyboard would limit some of the games that you could play such as Civilization, which would work on a machine of this class and speed, but without a numpad, you couldn't move any of your units on a diagonal. I also found the odd game where the keyboard controls didn't work very well. It seemed to be that the game thought the key was stuck down when it wasn't. I don't think this is a physical thing. I believe it's a software one, but it's something that doesn't seem to have an obvious solution. Now that I've had this machine for a few months, what do I think about it? 
Well, the issues I had when I first got it did leave a bit of a sour taste in my mouth, but once I got those resolved, it was actually pretty good. Having a VGA card is a little bit of a disadvantage in an XT class machine like this, as there are a lot of XT games that just basically don't work with a VGA. Even though it's mostly backwards compatible with CGA, there's a lot of stuff that use tech, hacked text modes or just different refresh rates that don't work with this screen or something like that that basically doesn't work on this version 2. The way I understand it, a lot of those worked on the version 1, so I think it's probably just this particular version of the machine that has that issue. The keyboard on this is okay, but there are issues with it in the sense that some games don't seem to like the way that it's implemented, and the keys stick or don't behave properly. Duke Nukem 1 is particularly bad on this machine, and also SimCity. You can't control the cursor keys with the keyboard. Uh, it basically sticks and keeps on going one direction all the time. This isn't a physical problem, this is down to how it's wired up and how the software is implemented in the BIOS, perhaps. Anyway, that's pretty much all I've got to say about this machine. If you've got one of them, I'd like to hear about your experiences in the comments below. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.